Today's lesson is 1.6 geometric sequences. You might notice that we skipped 1.5. reason we skipped 1.5 is because uh, 1.5 was online of best fit. Had to have a graphing calculator to really look at correlation coefficients and things like that, which you don't know what those are, but that's okay. Uh, I know a lot of you don't have a graphing calculator, and Desmos doesn't give us that, so we're just going to move on. It doesn't affect this new section. Uh, they're completely different topics. 1.5 was more tied to 1.4 than 1.6. Uh, geometric sequences, we learned about arithmetic sequences in 1.3. The differences between arithmetic sequences and geometric sequence is that whenever we did arithmetic sequences, we added uh, the same number to each term to get the next term. With geometric sequences, a geometric sequence is whenever we take each term and we multiply a preceding term by some non-zero constant. By non-zero constant, we mean a number that's not zero. So it's going to be the same number that gets multiplied each time before we just added a constant. The quotient, which means if we divide consecutive terms in a ge geometric sequence, is the constant r, which is called the common ratio before it was the common difference. Now we have the common ratio. So in order to find our common ratio or our constant we're, that we're multiplying by, we would take the second term and divide it by the first, or the third divided by the second, so on and so forth. So if we divide each term by the term before it, it should give us the same number if it's a geometric sequence. So that's how we would test it. So if I have this sequence, 2, 4, 8, 16, then to see if I can find a common ratio, I just do 4 over 2, 8 over 4, and 16 over 8. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 16 divided by 8 is 2. They're all the same number, so this is a common ratio this would be a geometric sequence. So let's see if we could recognize a geometric sequence. Here we have a sequence 392781. So in order to see if it's a geometric sequence or not, I do the exact same pattern of events. 9 divided by 3, that's 3. 27 divided by 9, is 3. 81 divided by 27, you got it, it's 3. So that tells us that this is a geometric sequence because we come up with the same common ratio, r equals 3. Now sometimes they're going to look a little different. Here we have one, and if we look at this, we might think, ah, that's definitely not a common ratio. But if we actually divide it out, we're going to have to practice our dividing fractions here. 5 divided by 4 divided by 5 divided by 2. In order to do this, we take the bottom and flip it and multiply it by the top. 5 over 4 times 2 over 5. I can cancel out terms. 5 divided by 5 will give me 1, so that cancels out. I'm left with 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Let's try the next one. 5 eighths over 5 fourths. That equals 5 eighths times 4 fifths. 5 cancel. 4 over 8 gives me 1 half. If I did the third one, it would give me the same thing. This is geometric with a common ratio of 1 half. Much like with arithmetic sequences, we can come up with an explicit and a recursive form of a geometric sequence. So in a geometric sequence, u sub n, each term u sub n equals our common ratio times the term previous. So 
So this is the nth term. And that's equal to the common ratio. times the term before. With arithmetic sequences, we just added the common difference. Now this has to be true for some u sub 1, so we have to be given a first term, and some non-zero constant r, and all n greater than or equal to 2. So we're looking, if we're given the first term, we can find the second term going forward. We can't find a first term unless we're giving some, given enough information. So we can't use the recursive form whenever we're doing this. Now I graded your quizzes, and one thing I noticed was that whenever we got to uh, some of the finding terms, a lot of you used the recursive formula to keep going out to, like, say, I wanted to find the 33rd term. You did all terms, listing all the terms out to the 33rd term. That's a really difficult way to do things. Make sure that you know how to do the explicit formulas so that we don't have to do it like that. Okay, find the common ratio of the geometric sequence. That was just kind of an aside, by the way. It has nothing to do with this slide. Find the common ratio of the geometric sequence with u sub 1 equals 2 and u sub 2 equals 8. List the first five terms of the sequence. Write the sequence as a recursive function and graph the function. By the way, since we're talking about the quiz, if you have a multi-part question, make sure you answer all the parts to the question. Okay, so we have u sub 1 equals 2, u sub 2 equals 8. It says list the first five terms. In order to do that, we have to find our common ratio. R equals the second term divided by the first, which is 4. Now list the first five terms. 2, 8, 8 times 4 is 32. 32 times 4 is 128. 128 times 4 is 512. And then we can dot, dot, dot that, because we have our first five terms. Write the sequence as a recursive function. u sub n equals 5 times u sub n minus 1, where n is greater than or equal to 2. And if we have to graph the function, I just go to Desmos and start putting the points in. The first one was... 1, 4, I think, maybe it was 1, 2, and we multiply by 4, then 2, 8, three, thirty-two, four, one twenty-eight, 4, and 5, 512. Now I can't see very much of this because our graph gets so high so fast. It goes jumps to 32. If I zoom out, it's not going to do a whole lot for me. So why don't we click the tools button? We'll go in, we'll set our x axis from negative one. Not a negative, negative one. Negative one. Two, we found the fifth term, so let's go up to the sixth term. Our y-axis, we don't need any negatives, so we can start at zero. And we can go up to, it went up to 512, so let's go to 530. Now if I look at this, I have one, two, three, four, and then my fifth point here. And if I click on those dots, it tells us exactly what that point is. So I have this function that kind of starts out low and builds up very quickly. If I put my sixth term in, that would be 512 times 6. I'm sorry, 512 times 4 to find the sixth term. That's going to be 2048. 
So if I put a six term in, it would be off the grid again. Six and 20, 48. And I would have to readjust this to go say, Uh, to 2100. And so you can see it goes up even faster. Our gap between this one and this point gets much larger. If we went again, it would get even larger than that. Explicit form of a geometric sequence. If u sub n is a geometric sequence with the common ratio r, then for all n greater than or equal to 1, I have u sub n, or my nth term, equals the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. So I can do this for all of my n's. If I needed to find u sub 33, it would be u sub 1 times r to the 33 minus 1, or the 32nd power. Don't have to list out 33 terms. Write the explicit form of a geometric sequence where the first two terms are 2 and negative 2 fifths, and find the first five terms of the sequence. Uh, we're getting good now. So let's start with negative 2 fifths over 2. I have a fraction on the top, like this, a fraction on the bottom. Flip it and multiply. Negative 2 fifths times 1 over 2. This gives me negative 1 fifth. So that's my r. r equals negative 1 fifth. It says find the first five terms of the sequence. Now I can use my explicit form to do that. U sub 3 equals U sub 1, which was 2, times negative 1 fifth And then that's to the 3 minus 1, which is 2. Negative one fifth squared gives me one over twenty five times two gives me two over twenty five. Find my use of four. That's two times negative one fifth to the four minus one, which is the third power. Negative 1 to the third remains negative 1. 5 to the third is 125. Times 2 gives me negative 2 over 125. Use of 5, 2 times negative 1 fifth. Then it's to the 5 minus 1 or the fourth power. Negative one to the fourth becomes a positive one. Five to the fourth is 625. Two times one is just two. So there's my first five terms of the sequence. Now we, all we have left to do is write this explicit form, which I had been using the whole time, so I should have done that first. Explicit form is simply u sub n equals 2 times, then it's my common ratio, negative 1 fifth, to the n minus 1. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to give you some practice problems on this tonight, um, and then we're going to move into a different portion of this tomorrow.